in lesson 3.1 we talked about the primary and secondary markets and the names for the transactions that take place when an issuer brings uh, an issue to the public in the primary market. Uh, in lesson 3.2 we're going to talk about this process, the process of underwriting a new issue and uh, the steps that uh, the underwriter must go through in order to uh, underwrite the new issue and bring it to market. The first thing to make note of is that in Canada we refer to um, investment bankers as investment dealers uh, and the types of institutions that we're talking about when we make mention of an investment dealer are institutions like RBC Dominion Securities, Nesbitt Burns, uh, CIBC Woodgundy, uh, those types of organizations. Um, these investment dealers are the are the people that are involved in underwriting or bringing the new issue of securities to market to the public. They can act either alone uh, or they can be uh, the lead underwriter as part of a syndicate. And a syndicate is simply a number of investment dealers who are brought together to bring the issue to the public, each one of them taking uh, part of the issue. Now when an issuer of new securities engages an underwriter, they're doing so uh, for a number of, of reasons and the underwriter has a number of responsibilities here. Uh, basically the underwriter is going to be giving advice to the issuing company as to what they should sell the shares for if we're dealing with shares, uh, so the price of the shares, or in the case of bonds, what is the yield that investors would require. Um, in order that the investing public will be interested in this in this investment when it comes to market. They will help the company decide where the issue should be made, whether it should be made in Canada or outside of Canada depending on market conditions. The timing of the issue, should they issue it now or should they wait? Um, and the features to attach. We talked about uh, in our discussion of both bonds and uh, shares, especially preferred shares, some of the different features that can be attached to those investments to make them more attractive. And the underwriter will help the issuing company to determine uh, what types of features should be uh, attached to that investment. And in addition to this, the underwriters are the people operating within the financial services industry who um, have contact with investors on a daily basis. So they will help the issuing company to determine once they have set these parameters how much interest there will be in this issue when it eventually does come to market. Now with regard to the underwriting process there are a number of steps that the underwriting firm takes in order to bring the issue to market and to the public. The first thing that's done is that a preliminary prospectus is prepared. The underwriter will go through a due diligence exercise where they make sure that they are uh, aware of uh, everything they need to be aware of with regard to the company and the industry that they're operating in and they will prepare this preliminary prospectus to outline uh, the company's dealings as well as any information on the particular security that is going to be brought to market. We call this preliminary prospectus a red herring prospectus because there is a notation in red on the front of the document that says that the, uh, this prospectus has not been approved by the Securities Commission and as a result is not yet available for sale. Uh, the preliminary prospectus, once it is complete, is filed with the appropriate Securities Commission in the province in which the securities will be sold and a waiting period ensues where the underwriter and the issuing company await approval from the Securities Commission. Once the Securities Commission has approved the, pers the preliminary prospectus, it becomes a full prospectus at that point. This means that the securities are now able to be sold to the public. It does not mean, however, that the Securities Commission has passed on the merits of the investment. They have not said that this is a good investment for investors to make. They have merely said that the issuing company has met all of the requirements for disclosure, for letting the investing public know all of the pertinent details uh, in order for the, the security to be able to be issued to the public. Uh, 
at the time that the preliminary prospectus becomes a full prospectus, uh, the price can then be announced. Oftentimes the preliminary prospectus is uh, submitted without a price attached and in during the waiting period the underwriting company uh, attempts to ascertain a correct price for the security. So after the prospectus comes out or as it becomes a full prospectus the price is, is announced uh, for the IPO or the season new issue. Now we'll turn our attention to the methods of underwriting that can be used by the investment dealer to underwrite the security. The process that we spoke of on the previous slide would be followed regardless of which method of underwriting is chosen. The method of underwriting really refers to how the investment dealer will be paid for their work uh, as well as how much risk they will take. Uh, so there are two main types. Uh, the first type is called a firm commitment and the second type is called best efforts. Now with the firm commitment, uh, the first notation that I've made on the slide is that this is considered a principal transaction. This is a, a fairly important um, concept, this idea between principal and agency transactions. A principal transaction is, an, is a transaction where the person who is selling the security has taken ownership of it prior to reselling it. In an agency transaction, they merely act as a go-between, they do not take ownership. So in a firm commitment, it is a principal transaction which means that the underwriter actually purchases the securities from the issuing company and then resells them to the public. Uh, in this way, the underwriter is assuming full risk because they have purchased the full issue of securities. If they cannot sell them, it's really their problem. They now own them and, and they've taken full risk of being able to resell them. One thing that does limit this risk is something called a market out clause. And a market out clause basically is a clause that is inserted into the underwriting agreement that allows the underwriter to get out of the agreement if some unforeseen occurrences happen with the markets that make the issue unsaleable. So this would be something again that would be out of the ordinary. The final point that I have under the firm commitment is uh, spread and what this is referring to is the way that the underwriter is being paid. Because the underwriter is purchasing the securities at one price and then selling them to the public at another, the amount that they are being paid is their spread between those two prices, the purchase price and the resale price. In the case of the best efforts arrangement, uh, this is an agency transaction and you'll remember that a moment ago I said that an agency transaction is a transaction where the person who is selling or reselling the security doesn't actually take uh, uh, ownership of it. So they're merely acting as a go-between, bringing together the issuing company and the investors who are going to buy the securities from them. So because they are acting merely as a go-between, they're really not taking any risk. If the issue does not sell, it still resides with the issuing company. So the issuing company has the, rest, the risk here. In this case, the third uh, bullet underneath best efforts uh, says commission, and that's because this is the way that the underwriter or the investment dealer is being paid in this case. Because they are not buying and reselling, they instead will receive a commission for the transactions that they bring together. Now previously I mentioned that regardless of the method of underwriting that is used, the same process would be um, would be taken in order to bring the issue to market. Uh, and I said that for the most part that was what happens. The reason that I, I put the for the most part into my discussion was because in some cases a, uh, an issuer can use something called the short form prospectus distribution system. And basically what this is is a system that allows the issuer to uh, gain approval for their, their new issue of securities more quickly. And the reason that a company can use this is because the company uh, already has stock traded on an exchange, already has all of their information with regard to their dealings, their um, balance sheets, income statements, uh, annual information forms, that sort of thing. It's already out in the public. The public already has access to it. So because this company already has all of this information out in the public, it's not really necessary for them to go through it again with the preliminary prospectus. So they use instead a short form prospectus and less paperwork and less time is required to get approval on the security issue.